This is Dawn Must Follow Night by Hunter Danson Part 1, Chapter 32 Read by the Author You cannot go to that meeting alone, Muriel pleaded. She will kill you. Merith sat at his desk, boring a hole in his favorite spot on the wall. Muriel was loath to leave the students in the chamber, so he almost didn't come when Merith called. But then he wasn't doing anything of use down there anyway. Sir, at least allow one of us to go with you, Dimitri said. Mina and Joff nodded in agreement. No, she asked for me alone, so alone I shall go. But you are the prelate, Percy argued. Are you to bow to her every wish? She is guilty of murder and treason against the Blades. Do not forget that she... I know what she did. Merith slammed his fist down on the table and faced the librarian. I carry the memory of that moon with me every moment. For an instant, Muriel could hear the pain breaking through Merith's voice, but only for an instant. The prelate sighed and looked down at the table. While I am meeting with her, you will leave and escape the castle with the students. I will not let them fall into her hands. Make your way to Tormund. Lord Sunro has ever been resistant to Lindril, and I do not think he will hesitate to give you aid once he learns of the Lord's plans. That is a distance of over one hundred miles, Muriel said. Merith nodded. And our horses were killed when the gate was destroyed. Merith nodded again. I am too old to walk that far, Muriel said. I will stay with you. Merith started to open his mouth to protest, but stopped. He sighed and looked Percy in the eye. I suppose this is one point I cannot sway you on. Percy nodded. But sir, Joff said, how will we get the students out? Amala said that she had a guard posted on the hidden exits from the castle, and I do not think she would relax them for the meeting with you. As troublesome as this storm is, Merith replied, it has provided us with an opportunity by blocking the sun. You can use ropes to lower the students down on the far side of the castle, and your tracks will be more difficult to follow in the rain. And what of the squad leaders? asked Muriel. That... Merith said, is something that I would discuss with you alone. He addressed the instructors. Go and make preparations. Inform me as soon as the students are ready to leave. Bond be with you. And with you. The instructors pressed their fists to their chests and left. Merith sat down and motioned for Muriel to do the same in the chair across from him. He unlocked a drawer in his desk and produced a bottle filled with clear liquid. Percy raised his eyebrows. Gorsak, eh? I thought prelates didn't drink. Merith placed two small cups on the table and poured the alcohol. I found this in the vault when I became the prelate. Not really sure how old it is. Maybe a century or two. He finished pouring and picked up the cup. This may be the last chance we have to try it. Muriel took his cup and held it out. He tried to think of something to toast, but nothing felt right. The two friends stared at each other and listened to the sound of the pelting rain. For the first time in almost seventy full days, Percy saw Merith's face relax. The prelate allowed himself the hint of a smile and touched his cup to the librarians. Then they drank. Muriel could feel the hot liquid pouring down his throat and warming his chest. A pleasant buzz flooded his temples. He closed his eyes and relished the feeling. Merith was smiling at him when he opened them. What? he asked. Be careful, old man. Don't want you giving in to old temptations. Muriel smiled at his friend's jab. I am one day younger than you. Don't forget that. Without the blessing of the black, you would look just as decrepit as I. Merith chuckled and trailed off, the rigidity returning to his face. 
He got up and paced with clasped hands. When he turned around, Percy's friend was gone, replaced by the prelate of the Blades of Dawn. The intensity of his black gaze made the librarian shift in his seat. The Blades are not the castle, Merith said. True though it is, we must protect the chamber. The cataclysm only happens once per century. She does not need the chamber. She needs those inside it. Kavar, Gwen, Isadora, Sloane. I had hoped that we could delay the siege for these three moons until the cataclysm occurred. But it waits. He thought out loud. If it happens before my meeting with Amala, then the plan is simple. Let the squad leaders escape with the others. If not, we must delay her. He stopped pacing and looked down, lost in thought. It all depends on the cataclysm. <laughs>